that to review for some logs. So you need to be able to go between logs and exponents. You need to be able to evaluate some logarithms without a calculator. And then you need to be able to graph both exponential and logarithmic functions for your kids. So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite these logs as exponents. The base of the log is the base of the exponent. So if it's a base 2 log, it's a base 2 exponent. 2 to the power of x equals 16. And you should know your powers of 2. 2, 4, 8, 16. Or x equals 4. 2 to the 4 is 16. The second one doesn't have a base. Oh no, what's the base? The base is 10. It's implied to be 10. It is the common logarithm. You need to know that. The base is 10 if it doesn't write it. So 10 to the x equals zeros. All right, so it's four. However many zeros there are, that's the power of ten. So it's four zeros, ten to the fourth is ten thousand. Going the other way, I think it's a little trickier. So we're going to start with, it is a base four logarithm. The base of the exponent is the base of the logarithm. Four to the power of three equals x, and four times four is sixteen. The base 3 log of 3 to the x equals 81. 3, 9, 27, 81. 3 to the 4 is 81. Okay, so just rewriting them is not a big deal, but it does determine your fate. If you can't do this, you can't do any of the solving, and it's going to get a lot tougher when we start to move the variable around. On so here's just evaluating. These are pretty easy. You should be able to rewrite them as an exponent. 3 to some power is 27, and that would be to the third power. 3 to the third power is 27. 9 to some power is 27. Okay, this is a little trickier. So if they have different bases, I'm going to rewrite 9 as 3 squared. 3 to the 2x now. 3 squared to the x is 3 to the 2x. And 27 is 3 to the third. So 2x equals 3. When you divide both sides by 2, you get 3 halves. So 3 halves. 2 to some power is 1 over 16. Well, I know that 2 to the 4th power, oops, 2 to the 4th power is 16, but since it's in the denominator, it's going to be negative 4. I want it to be 1 over 2 to the 4th. The way we write that is 2 to the negative 4th power, so the exponent is negative 4. 2 to the negative 4 is 1 over 16. And then again, this doesn't have a base, so the base is implied to be 10. And then you count the zeros, there are 3 of them, 10 to the 3rd is 1. You guys have a checkpoint over evaluating. You can do that check as many times as you want. It will give you different questions. So it's an easy way to get some extra practice. And get some extra practice. Uh, for my exponential function, the first thing I'm going to do is start with a parent function. So if you tell me it's a base 2, you want me to graph, I'm going to start with 2 to the x. And I remember my parent function starts with that, those x values. 1 half, 1, 2, 4, 8. That's my parent function. That's not what I'm actually going to graph. I'm going to translate that. And to translate that, I'm going to look here. And if it says x minus 2, that means I'm going to go right 2. And on the outside, if it says minus 5, I'm going to go down 5. So once I have the translation, now it's easy to change this table. If I go right 2, that will change the x's. So add 2 to all the x's. Maybe 1 plus 2 is 1. 2. I can add 2 to all these. I get this. Subtract 5. So 1 half minus 5 is negative 4.5. 1 minus 5 is negative 4. 5 is negative 1, 3. Now I have the function I'm asked to graph. I start with a parent function. I translate it. Now I can draw it. So at 1, I'm at negative 4.5. That's right here. 2 is at negative 4. 3 is at negative 3. 4 is at negative 1. 5 is at So 1 is at negative 4.5, 2 is at negative 4, 3 is at negative 3, okay, cool. And then we have the asymptote. So I'm going to also draw my asymptote. The asymptote for the exponentials follows the vertical shift, so it went down 5. That means my asymptote should be at negative 5, and it looks like it is. So when I draw it, it's a little steep, and then it has an asymptote, so it goes down. Your domain is all real numbers. All exponentials, and then the range. If the asymptote's at negative five, it's negative five and above. So negative five. One more. This is.
is the base2 log, so I'm going to start with the exact same parent function. Base2 logs, I'm going to start with the base2 exponential parent function. So I'm just copying it. Base. There we go. That's what I'm starting with. It's a base2 log. I'm going to graph a base2 exponent. The next thing I'm going to do is flip it. So I could have just copied that as well. That's my base 2 log. That's not what I'm asked to graph. I'm asked to translate that graph. And to do that, I'm going to go left 1 and up 3. Left 1, up 3. Just like the exponentials move, these move the same way. Left 1, up 3. So to go left 1, I will subtract from the x's 1. 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half. 2 minus 1 is 0. 2 minus 1 is 1. 4 minus 2 is 3. Seven. Add 3 to all the y's because it's going up. So negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 0 plus 3 is 3, 4, 5, 6. There we go. So there's my graph. My table anyway. And that is the actual function that I'm asked to graph. That's g of x. So when I plot those points, negative 1 half is at 2, 0 is at 3, 1 is at 4, 3 is at 5, and 7. Six, seven is at six. Now the logs follow the horizontal shift, so it goes left one. That's where your asymptote will go because it's a vertical asymptote that's moving, so it moves left and right. This makes sense that moving a vertical line up and down doesn't do anything. If you have a vertical line, you can move it up and down, it just stays the vertical line. So we're talking about the horizontal shift. Now I can draw it. This is my log, so it looks like this. And it's going to be asymptotic like so. Okay, good. So the domain for logs is restricted. It's the horizontal shift, which is negative 1 to infinity. So negative 1 is the smallest x, and it goes from to the right. The asymptote is at y equals, no, I'm sorry, x equals negative 1. I feel like back here I said the range. Yeah. So I gave you the range, but the asymptote, I should say, is y equals negative 1. Good read the question. The range for this one would be all real numbers. Okay, but the asymptote is at x equals negative 1. So it needs to answer the wrong question, or different question. So if you can rewrite them, if you can evaluate them, and you can graph them, you are good to go. Maybe take a look at those other videos, make sure your checkpoints are done, and maybe hit that like and subscribe button.